All right. You see, he just did what his grandpa does, right? Welcome back, everyone. Ty's here. Should that be the intro? All right. Welcome back, everybody, to Tied Up with the Morgans. Uh, today, I got Ty with me, and uh, we are collecting sap. And we, yeah, we're out collecting sap. We hear some birds. We're playing with sticks. We're adding leaves to the sap because it's going to add a better taste. So that's what Ty thinks. But anyway, anyways, guys, welcome back uh, to Tied Up with the Morgans. So today we are going to take you around. We're going to collect our sap, see how things are going, kind of give you an update on everything. Ty can't wait. That's why he's just so excited, right? Tell him what we're going to do. Yeah. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to take you around to the 20 different trees we tapped and we're going to collect all the sap, keep it cool, and we'll go from there, I guess. But uh, give you an update, it, the weather is above freezing now. It's, it's warming up a little bit, uh, actually a lot. The snow's for the most part melted, depends on the hillside. Some spots don't get a lot of sun. Still, still some snow there. I do have a couple of big piles of snow I had made. Uh, we also have a couple of chest freezers that I'll, I can use if I need to to keep the uh, sap cool. At night, it's getting nice and cool again. So really, it's just my biggest concerns uh, during the day of keeping the sap cool. But I think we'll be okay, really. Um, so that's what we're gonna do today. You're gonna see us collecting sap and uh, probably some of the evaporator too. Um, yeah, I think I think uh, in this video it'll, I'll have uh, we'll include the clips of uh, me finishing the evaporator, show you how we did that, and I haven't boiled yet, but we, we will show you that in this video, and that's it. So uh, yeah, thanks for being here, guys, and uh, you'll see what we get into. He really wants to be a part of this one. I mentioned these buckets are really good for uh, keeping it sealed. It's got a nice little lock. Yeah. And that's what we're gonna do. We're going to move this one right here. Sorry, Ty. Not that. Pretty big one. Okay. Some people may be more concerned. I'm not all cons that concerned about having a little bit of bark in the sap. It really adds to it. I mean, you'll see some of what Ty is doing. His approach, his batch of syrup this year, is going to be a little different. He is including some maple leaves in it, right? So, this is actually the second tree we're collecting from today. I mean, this bucket's uh, probably 40% full. Uh, yeah. So that's not bad, actually. All right, Ty, how does it look? Ty. Uh, yeah. Look good? <laughs> yeah, there's more. So, see it right here? Oh. About half, half full. Okay. Let's start transferring this into the other buckets. What do you say? Okay. That's what he said. So, with this warmer weather, colder nights, the sap is really starting to flow. So I'm gonna put that back in, and then we are going to switch these buckets out. First thing, I uh, hope you guys like the uh, sweatpants we're going with. Not the uh, not the ideal clothing for this. Um, 
usually go with the jeans, but uh, Ty and I were actually matching earlier. And then I changed his outfit, just his pants, to something a little better for the uh, woods. And so now I'm the only one in gray sweatpants and Ty's got the camo on, looking better than me, like usual. But uh, once he passes me, I'll show you how much this is dripping. It's actually quite a bit. He's coming around me here, hanging on to my back. But yeah. So this is crazy. While I switch that out for maybe one minute, you can see the amount of sap in here is really, really filling up. I'm actually gonna pour this in here now but uh, yeah, this tube's pretty much full. Just in, you know, a minute. So it really is flowing really good right now. Um, yeah, there's a really good drip coming. And yeah, this one, like I said, this was uh, probably maybe 40% full. Keep that in there, because we're gonna use the sap. Thank you, good job. Good job, Ty. All right, on to the next tree. This is number three of 20. Okay, we've done four trees so far. And we have probably eight gallons, I would say. So, let's see how we look here. And this one, not a whole lot. All right. Here you go. This part is gonna be from Ty. He's going to show you what Ty sees, Ty's world. I will, he's making a video. I will. Yeah, he's making a video now. Ty, do you want to tell them? Ty's got his own bucket. So we've went this, we've, we've uh, collected from six trees and so far we have 10 gallons. Not bad. We've got 14 more trees to check. I just realized, I think I know why grandpa, why your pap doesn't do maple syrup. And I think it's because of how muddy it is. But wow, it is muddy. Okay, so far we've done 11 trees and have 15 gallons. This will be tree number 12. And I don't know if you can see that. Not really, but this thing is about full. It's probably four and a half gallons in here. So yeah, we're uh, you know, just under 20 gallons, I would say, for the first 12 trees, which is pretty good so I think we're gonna be boiling sooner than I thought um, so yeah we got about eight more trees to go all right guys so I wanted to give you a little update is uh it's Monday right now and it, this morning when I was leaving for work it was uh, 50 degrees and rain it's now like 30 and it's really getting cold it's gonna get down to 15 tonight um, which is great good for the sap it's gonna be above freezing tomorrow and then freezing at night. And so this this next week's perfect. The past week's been perfect. Um, we did have a few days that were a little warm. Uh, one day it got up to like 55, maybe close to 60. Um, but everything's staying cool. No issues there. I'll actually show you um, kind of what's, what's helping keep all the sap cool on these warm days and out of the sun. Um, part of it is just these pine trees, as you can see, uh, really help protect from the uh, sun but I'll, I'll turn this around and I'll show you. All right, so right here is uh, 32 gallons of sap in this snow. This snow pile um, actually was, was much bigger. Went out to kind of about in here 
and yeah but it uh it's melted obviously quite a bit but for the most part it's still a big enough pile i could probably fit a couple more buckets if i had to um so yeah it's it's helped keep this sap cool and uh which is what we want we don't want it going bad but yeah i'm, I'm kind of happy with how this turned out uh also if you're wondering what this all the wood is here these are uh compost bins we have made out of pallets all right so the snow i think is helping to keep everything cool uh some of these days it gets it's been a little too warm for it to sit out in the sun so what i've been doing is collecting and then i'm just going to store it here in the snow uh fortunately the next couple days i won't have to worry about that uh tonight and tomorrow it's going to be cool enough the following day i'm going to be planning i'm planning to boil so everything i have i'll boil at that point and uh, we'll go from there but i'm happy with how it's turning out so far um yeah i guess one thing i'd like to do is kind of go over some questions clear up some things uh, I see a lot of comments and I'm going to try to run through the process again on what I've done up to this point. So a lot of people are saying this is something they may want to do. They have questions, you know, is this something that you should do? Uh, if you have maple trees, I think you should try it. Definitely try it. Um, some things to keep in mind. Really, and you don't have to do it my way, but what you need is you need to get the sap from the tree. And I kind of showed you how to drill that. Uh, this, the proper size of a hole you want to drill in and uh, how to collect. You can do it however, you know, some people just stick the bucket right on the tree um, by sticking something in the tree to hold the bucket. You can do that. There's different ways. Um, but whichever path you go with, it doesn't matter. But what it really comes down to is just you're going to extract that sap. You want to get the sap from the tree and you want to store the sap depending on the weather, depending on where you live, depending on the kind of maple tree. Um, there's a lot of things that go into uh, the sap and how much sap you'll get. But to keep it simple, you just got to think about extracting the sap from the tree and storing it. So we went over some ways to extract, uh, ways to collect. You know, I use the five gallon buckets. I think next year I will upgrade to like an IBC tote. My dad's friend, he um, is able to get me if needed a food grade one that's clean, you know. Uh, so I might do that next year because I'm probably going to expand again. This year I can make it work um, with 20 trees. But there is a lot of sap already. Still have a few more weeks of this, so we'll see. Uh, but anyways, if you're drilling in the hole like I did, a five six, if you're drilling in the tree like I did, you want a 5 16 hole. Um, and depending on the size of the tree, which I tapped quite a few trees that are pretty big. Um, and I have a lot of people telling me you can tap a tree more than you can put more than one tap on a tree and I am aware of that I just didn't because I have you know the trees they're all close enough I thought I would just kind of do more than one tree I so I did but I am aware that you can put more than one tap on a tree um, so you can depending on the size someone I don't remember kind of gave me a good rule of thumb to go off of I've heard different things you know like 18 inches you know you can add a second one but someone said pretty much a tap every foot so you know 12 inches, one tap, 24, two, 36, three, and so on. So that's kind of a good rule of thumb, I guess, when doing this. Um, but yeah, you can keep that in mind. And uh, so if this is something that you'd like to do, I definitely recommend trying it. Um, so that's just a brief, very quick kind of overview of uh, the tapping. Um, the next thing is the storing. You don't want this stuff to bake in the sun. You don't want it to go bad because it will spoil. Um, they say treat it just like you would any other food, like milk. You don't want to leave milk out and if it's 40 degrees. You don't want to just leave it sitting outside. It, it can go bad. Uh, so you want to keep it cool. That's why I have this here in the snow. Uh, so I think that's going to help. But I know it's helping. Uh, and also you can freeze it if you have to do that. Or if you live somewhere where the weather's cooperating, especially up north, a lot of people like Vermont and... and uh, you know, places up north, I'll see uh, a lot of videos of people with their operation is, you know, you get so much snow throughout the winter that once this time comes, you have a couple feet of snow that are going to melt off and it's going to take some time to melt off. So if you live in a place like that, um, that's going to help. You know, it's going to help because it's going to maybe it warm up during the day. But if you have a pile of snow around your sap, it's not going to go bad because it's going to keep that cooled. So that's what you want. Um, 
And yeah, you just don't want it, uh, if it's gonna be real hot, because sometimes it can happen, you get some warm days. Just be prepared on storing that sap so it's not gonna go bad on you because you put a lot of time into this, you don't wanna waste any of that. So make sure you're prepared on that, the storing. All right, so anyways, we are going to uh, head out and uh, collect the sap. This time I don't have my sidekick with me, so I'm probably gonna be moving a little slower. All right guys, so we're going to assemble the evaporator. Um, gonna kind of go over that, what I'm using. Keep in mind, this is a uh, like a cinder block or cement block uh, approach. So it's, it's not gonna be the most expensive one. It's actually probably one of the cheapest options you have. And uh, that's just because it, it boils fairly quick from what I see. I mean, it's definitely faster operations, but for what I'm doing, I think this is perfect. It's a cheaper approach and it's something I'm still learning gonna get into it and gonna expand every year. So that's that's actually why I'm not making this a permanent one. I, I've seen people build really nice ones out of the cement blocks and uh, you know, they'll, it's a permanent evaporator. Like it's, they're gonna keep it there for a while. That's not the case here because I don't know what next year brings. You know, I think by doing 20 trees this year, I'm gonna have a little more than last year, but I also expect to do more next year. Um, I really enjoy this and I think it's gonna just keep expanding. So that's why I'm not making this permanent because I don't know what I'll do next year. Maybe I'll try a different style of evaporator. I'm not sure, but uh, that's just kind of why I'm doing what I'm doing. So we'll go over that here, show you what I'm using and why, but uh, yeah, let's get into it. All right guys, so by now you've seen the video of, uh, by the time you're seeing this video, you have seen the first video and in there is when I started to put together the evaporator and I didn't finish that day. I said I was gonna come back out, I ended up getting caught up with Ty and uh, yeah, it was late at that point. So today I'm gonna finish that up. All right, so hopefully you can hear me over these uh, crows, they're pretty loud, but yeah, we're gonna get right back to it. I'm gonna kinda start putting this together. It's right where I left off. There was just a few blocks put there and then got called away. As you can see, now the snow's gone. Um, it got pretty warm the other day, but we're gonna throw this together and get ready to boil in a couple of days. All right, so I had to go grab a uh, tamper. My dad has one, actually, I don't have it. I don't have one, so I just borrowed one from him just to help uh, get this leveled out a little easier. Um, so that's why there's a little bit of a pause and we're back to it. You're gonna see a few more tools around. I grabbed a rake, different shovel and went and got some different dirt. So uh, yeah, we're gonna get right back to it. All right, so uh, here's the uh, finished product with my little sidekick here. He came out to take a look. All right, so in the middle of this time lapse, I don't know how early, but the camera actually had died. And that's my fault for not really 
checking on the camera for probably an hour, but it is done. I'll go over everything I did. It's really, really basic actually and pretty simple. I mean, looking at this, you can tell it's just a block stacked for the most part. So I'll go over that and uh, step by step. Turkey vulture. They are big. All right. So the camera died while I was in the middle of a time lapse on the making of all of this. And I didn't realize it until I was done. But uh, it's a really simple design. Um, I, 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 I wish I had that video. I feel really bad about that, but I'm gonna walk you through it. It's uh, real simple. And trust me, if I can do this, you can too. So, what took the longest for me was just leveling out the ground. Um, and that's just because everything was so frozen this morning. It was, uh, it was 20 degrees and it had, it's been frozen for a while. So uh, the earth is pretty, the, the ground was pretty hard. Um, and so what I ended up doing just was easiest for me was just shoveling everywhere that I was gonna do this, place the blocks. And then I found it easier to, from another pile that I have, take dirt and then fill it as I needed it. Uh, so that, that was easier than trying to work with chunks of ice and uh, frozen soil. So as you can see, I mean, it's like I said, it's really simple, but it's three high and running three this way. Same thing on the other side. And then this back here, all I did here was just stacked three high, three high. And I just put some different brick on the bottom here to uh, keep this opening just a little off the ground um, of the pipe. So this stove pipe, I got this, um, this is a six inch. I really should have went with a four inch, but I made it work. Uh, so you'll see this stove pipe here at the 90 degree angle standing this straight up and then again 90 degree angle here trying to keep the smoke away and uh, it fits really nice in here these grooves help kind of just keep that tight um, and then I just threw some blocks that I had laying around behind this um, yeah uh, putting this together I've never done that before, actually. I've never put stovepipe together, so it was a little tricky. Um, I honestly just, I'm not gonna walk you through it because I don't know enough about it, but I just watched a video uh, and it took, you know, just a couple minutes to put this together. You pretty much just kind of bend it in place and it snaps right in. Um, yeah, so that's it. I mean, like I said, it's simple. All I did was shovel everything out then I kept using a level throughout the whole thing to kind of make sure it's going to be a le going to be level across everywhere because you know if it's level one way keep in mind the pan's going to be here as well as on the other side so it has to be level all the way across and that's because you don't want your sap to kind of be boiling at a uneven rate or you know you don't want it to overflow on one side too low on the other um, so yeah that's just going to help keep everything level. And then with some of the extras I just put here in the front and then uh, just some brick I had laying around to kind of just fill that in. But as you saw, everything fits in nicely to where there's really no openings. Um, as for a door, I've seen people do different things, you know, get a stainless steel door or like patio blocks, things like that. I didn't have any of that. So I just went with some of the extra cinder blocks I had. All right. So again, looking at this very simple build, just stacking the blocks, got the stove pipe. And that's it. The pans will fit right in. Here. And here. And that's it. So, it's simple. And what I plan to do is just move these out as I continue to add wood. But that's actually what we're going to do now is we're going to get a fire started and uh, we're also going to carry over all the sap I have. I'll show you that first. I'll carry some over and I'll show you where I'm storing that. All right, so right here is 50 gallons of sap. 
I have 20 trees still to collect from for today, but I'm going to wait till I empty some of these before I go and collect those. So this pile of snow was much bigger, um, but I'm really glad I did it. It worked out well. It is all staying cold. Uh, it doesn't get a lot of sunlight in this spot, so that's good. And that's kind of why I picked this spot is because of these, you know, pine trees and where the sun comes up, the sun actually comes up over there and it sets over there. So to the right. So I don't get a, uh, it doesn't get much sun here, which is nice. But uh, this pile of snow has been here for at least a week now and it's uh, holding up well. It's keeping the sap cool and that's, that's what it's supposed to do. So I'm happy with how that turned out. So I just carried this over here right after talking to you about that. And uh, I noticed it is uh, a lot of ice in here still. So it definitely is keeping the sap cool. I'm, I'm pretty happy with how the snow turned out. And uh, you know, it bought me a week, week and a half really, because some of those days were a little too warm. Really only a couple, but I, you know, don't, I get a little worried because I don't have the uh, storage capacity to keep all of this inside. Yeah, that was really the first time I've moved any of the sap, the buckets outside of the snow to find out that it's, you know, there's ice in there, which is good. That's a good thing. I, like I said, I was a little worried and I'm glad it worked out. So now we're going to start this fire and start to boil. My helper's leaving me. He can help? You gonna help? All right, I'll do it myself. He's coming. Back. What are we doing? Oh, that's dirty, huh? Alright guys, so I wanted to go over, um, right before we start to boil, I wanted to kind of go over why we boil. Uh, and I say that, I think most, most of you know that, right? But I still do come across people that they didn't realize that you had to boil it down like you did. Some people didn't really know anything about the maple syrup, uh, about maple syrup and, and the whole process. So whenever I showed you the tapping of the trees, all of that, that was collecting sap from the trees, okay? From maple trees. We get the sap from the trees and then we boil that down. Uh, and the reason we boil it down is because uh, it's like 98% water, all right? But there is sugar in there. So to get that, you have to boil it down and that's why we are doing what we're doing so we're collecting you know we have sap everywhere we collected it all and we then boil it all down um, and what I mean by that is you boil out the, the you boil the water off to get the syrup um, and it's just not as simple as that but we'll go into all of that as we're doing it so there's a lot of ways to boil uh, some people can you know last year I used a turkey fryer and it took a long, long time. Fortunately, I only had 10 trees, so it wasn't, I wasn't over, I actually was in over my head, but I made it work. Um, so that's just, the reason that takes so long, and it's it's uh, not very efficient because you're, you know, it's gonna cost a lot in propane, which I did have to buy a lot of propane tanks. Um, but what happens is you want more of a surface area, you want a greater surface area to boil faster. Um, Whenever you're boiling on a turkey fryer, you're boiling in like a stock pot, right? Stainless steel stock pot. Um, and it doesn't have a lot of surface area. It holds a lot, but not a lot of surface area. So it takes longer to boil. When you're boiling on kind of the pans like I have here, it, it should be, and I guess we'll see, maybe not, but uh, no. The greater surface area, it's gonna boil faster. Uh, and that's what's great about these block evaporators is um, it's it's cheap, right? It's not a very expensive build. You saw what I did. I showed you everything. Really, I think it's, you know what, I'll, I'll have to put the uh, total in here and go over that again. I don't don't know it exactly, but it was not a lot of money, right? Um, I almost probably spent more money in buckets than everything else. Probably did actually. Um, but if you are trying to be really frugal about this, I didn't do this, I should have, I just didn't get to it, is, for buckets, getting off topic here, but for buckets, 
try to find uh, bakeries. I hear bakeries have a lot of those and that they either will give them away for free or very cheap. Um, so that's a, an idea if you're trying to cut costs. But anyways, back to the evaporator. The block approach that I like, it's, uh, it's really cheap, but it's easy too. Anyone can do it. Like I said, if I can do it, I know you can do it. Um, so I didn't go with a permanent build, right? That's just because I just stacked the blocks. I didn't make them permanent. Um, and that's kind of, I like that. You know, it's, it's a little easier. And I don't know if I'm going to do it in the same spot next year. I don't know if I'm going to do the same kind of eva evaporator. There's a lot of different evaporators you can use. Um, so I've named two so far. Uh, some people will take like a uh, oiled barrel, kind of like that, like a barrel. And you'll kind of cut the side of it and you'll weld the pans into it. And then you'll have it, you'll put that barrel on legs. So you'll have the barrel on its side on legs, and then you'll have a little door on the front with the stainless steel pans welded in the top, um, and you can heat it with wood. And then there's like professional evaporators, which I really don't know a whole lot about, but um, they're built for, you know, evaporating. Uh, so they're built very well, they're very strong, and um, they boil very fast. But I'm not gonna buy that right now. So that's why we're doing this. So what we'll be doing is we're boiling it off and we want that greater surface area like I talked about to speed up the boiling time. Because keep in mind, 40 gallons of sap, it takes 40 gallons of sap to make a gallon of syrup. All right, so I uh, wanna just go over again. I'm trying to make sure I cover everything because sometimes I just assume the viewer knows what I'm talking about or they know everything about maple syrup. So I'm, I'm not the best at teaching um, because I forget that. You know, you may have never heard of this process and that's okay. Uh, so that's why I wanna go over it. Um, but the evaporators, I think I've talked enough about. If you have questions, please comment below. But I do wanna talk about the pans. It's very important uh, that you use stainless steel. And uh, I'm gonna turn this around. And so you have to use stainless steel pans because they can withstand the heat of a fire being directly under it. It can withstand the heat of a turkey fryer or however you're boiling, it can withstand that heat. And that's very important because if you don't, if you use like an aluminum pot or pan, it, it's gonna boil through eventually. And uh, you don't want it to happen. just started the fire and as you see there is a lot of ice in here so I'm gonna dump this on and we will be cooking in a minute all right the sap is added and as you can tell there's a lot of ice in these um, I'm really glad I did the snow pile like I uh, had thought about it. I didn't know if it was gonna work I thought it might melt too soon I thought maybe it's silly but it really worked out well and it's kept 50 gallons of sap cold and that's exactly what you need so that's the way to do it if you have a lot of snow get a big pile to keep that sap cool for whenever it warms up so right now i got just a uh, little battery operated uh blower and i'm just using that to get the fire real hot but the chimney is working so glad to see that that's working out well up and using the blower which is helping a lot. Let's get that fire extra hot. You see the chimney is working out well. Really 
really see it, I think, because it's just so bright out, but it's uh, it's really cooking in there. Uh, I wish I would have started this a little earlier, just so the light would be better, because it's really hard to tell what's going on right now, and the light's so harsh, but that's okay. Um, All right, so we are, uh, it's getting hotter, and the chimney's working, so I'm happy about that. Um, really, uh, don't have much else of an update. I mean, I can see where there's some smoke coming through the cracks. It's definitely far from perfect, but I think the majority of it's, uh, pouring out of here, which is good. We are now starting to get a boil over here. Let's say it took probably 30 minutes. Um, I don't know if that's normal, but that's what we got. All right, we're starting to get a good boil back here on the back pan. That's the hottest one. This front one, I'm gonna kind of treat as like a warmer and then I'll add from here to that. So we've put about 10 gallons in so far. Uh, you can tell right now, actually, it's hard to tell with the steam, but you can tell the difference in color, right? This one, a lot more clear. The one on the left has more of an amber color to it. Uh, brown, I guess you'd say, gold, I don't know. Uh, but you can tell it very clear um, that it is. Obviously, it's boiling faster, but you can tell the color difference. Um, and that's, that's good. That's what we want to see. So what I'm going to do is just add more sap. I got uh, two more buckets I carried over. So I'll add probably just a few gallons to this one here on the right. And then, um, yeah, I'll just continue to add from there to this one here on the left. So I'm just going to show you, this is uh, one of the five gallons I had sitting in that snow and a lot of ice in here again. So I love to see that, you know, last year I wasn't nearly as prepared. We also didn't have a great winter, but uh, this year we had a lot of snow. And uh, I was able to, like I said, I got a large pile. I actually took the wheelbarrow, I'd fill it up, and I continued to just take a bunch of loads of that over and put in that pile. And then there, uh, I got it really packed down real tight. Uh, so then on the warmer days, it kind of started to melt a little, and then it would freeze again. So it turned into a nice pile of pretty much ice. And then I was able to shovel out slots to place the buckets in, and then, that is where we got this. So if you live in a place where you're gonna tap trees and do some maple syrup like this, I definitely recommend um, getting a pile of snow like that to keep the sap cool because um, you don't want it to spoil. And yeah, like I said, we had a couple days that were well over 50 and the snow's still there. It's in a spot where you know, it's protected from the sun, so that helped a lot. But I, I recommend doing something like that if you're worried about keeping all your sap cool. I also thought I'd show you. I ended up turning this one on its side. Um, I think that helps get uh, better airflow. I think, you know, I, I've only been doing it for a little bit so far. But yeah, I think that helps get more air in there and helps it burn better. Run. Okay, so we just were at a point where this front one actually was uh, boiling. Um, so it got up to a pretty good boil. Um, and anyway, so what I did is I took quite a bit from it, added to this one because this one was boiling down a lot. Um, and then since I've added about four and a half gallons to this one here, the front one. Um, so yeah, it's very clear the color here. And it, it really does smell good too. I love that smell. Um, it's got a good kind of just a sweet smell. But anyways, I, I started about, I started the fire two and a half hours ago. Um, and it took probably 40 minutes for it to, to get to a strong boil, maybe even longer. It took quite a while to get a heavy boil. Um, and since then, the last, I would say the last two hours, hour and a half, 
it's been going really strong. Um, and yeah, it's, it's really, I've just been out here working outside as I'm, as it's boiling, but I've been coming back every, you know, 20, 30 minutes and it's, uh, everything's going well. Really? So yeah, it, like I said, it's probably been boiling, I would say an hour and a half to two hours, probably two hours. Um, and I mean, again, I'm trying to keep track of how many gallons per hour. Um, I think it's actually boiling really fast. I don't know the number, but I, I would think probably eight to 10 an hour. Uh, that's what it feels like at least. Maybe I'm wrong, but uh, it's going pretty fast, uh, which is a ton faster than what I did last year with the turkey fryer. Um, and I needed something better because I had more trees. So yeah, uh, this is something you should definitely try out if you're uh, new to this. Um, but yeah, like I said, it's boiling fast. Uh, so far I've added 20 gallons total and uh, obviously there's some in the pot still, the pans, but it is, uh, it's boiling quick. So I'm gonna go grab two more buckets out of the uh, snow pile and bring over and we'll go from there. Okay, well, I appreciate all of you watching. I appreciate all the comments. So many of you on that first video had some great input, had some good questions, and just, you showed a lot of love and I appreciate that. Uh, we all do, Kate does. Um, I do wanna thank Kate. Kate does all the editing. I mean, as you can tell, she does pretty much everything for this channel. For that last video, that was the most I've contributed in, in video, really. And uh, Kate did all the editing. So she did an awesome job with that. Thank you, Kate. Um, and thank you to everyone who watched that. A lot of you watched and had a lot of nice things to say. And yeah, it's really cool to uh, just kind of share this with you guys. And I, what I like about this, what I really like about it is... I'm doing something that I, I don't know a whole lot about, right? I know a lot more than I did last year, but I'm still not an expert, and I'm kind of just sharing it with you as I go along. So it's nice to kind of do this with others. That's what it feels like. It feels like I'm doing it with you guys. You get to kind of see me go through it. I learn, and you give input. So thank you for that. Um, but here's where we stand right now. So that'll be it for today's video. Um, Pretty much got to see the evaporator, got to see me collecting sap, and uh, yeah, put the evaporator together pretty easy. Talked about that a lot. So that's it for today's video, guys. Thank you for watching. Uh, I hope you now know how you can build one of these evaporators for yourself, if that's something that you're interested in. I recommend it. Uh, like I said, the efficiency of this, it's I'm really impressed. You know, I saw people, a lot of people saying that online, but it just seemed like maybe mine wouldn't be as efficient because... I don't know. I just felt like I didn't know as much as them, I guess. But I'm really impressed, and uh, it's very efficient. So thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment below. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. If you have any input, please leave them in the comments. Um, yeah, you guys have been awesome, and uh, I really appreciate all the support. And again, thank you to Kate for doing such a good job with the editing in the last video, all of her videos. But the last one, you know, it... I was able to just give her all the video and she made a great video out of it. So Kate, awesome job and thank you everyone. So again, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment below. Thanks guys. I do want to add just one more thing, okay? And that is, I'm impressed with, I've, I've said it already, how impressed I am with the efficiency, but I'd like to just show how much wood I've used in 30 gallons of boiling, which I'm, I find, pretty efficient um so I, i'm gonna turn this camera so in 30 gallons of boiling here is what we've used out of this tote i expected to use a lot more but yeah i'm, I'm really impressed you can't beat it